Thank you, Randall, Ransell. <coughs> thank you, Mr. Lude. And thank you for all of you who have remained till this last particular session. My remarks uh, will be divided into three categories. Uh, one will be where we were and how we got to where we are. The second will be where we are in terms of pluses and minuses and challenges and opportunities. And then I'll try to close on where what might we go forward from here. In terms of how we got to where we are, where we were, I made some brief references the first evening uh, to this relationship going back far further than most are aware. Most references in the United States are to a meeting 70 years ago this year between America's then President Franklin Delano Roosevelt and the founder of modern day Saudi Arabia, King Abdulaziz bin Abdulrahman al Saud, on February the 14th, 1945. And yet the relationship predated that with regard to American medical personnel coming to the kingdom every three months, staying for one week and treating patients and those in need without asking anything in return. And as early as the 1950s, working with Aramco, uh, the effort to erase trachoma was a successful one. And we have uh, Dr. Salwa al Hazar, one of the, not just the kingdoms, but the regions and the world's uh, leading specialists in eye diseases, diagnosis, assessment, and treatment, uh, who has graced our presence in this uh, conference. And then in the 70s, with the working together with the establishment of the King Faisal Specialist Hospital, the 80s, King Khalid Eye Hospital, and carrying on from these chapters in medical diplomacy uh, straight through to recognizing that diseases do not require a visa. And the collaboration between our two peoples, working through the Center for Disease Control regarding avian flu, MERS, SARS, HIV, AIDS, and other challenges have benefited both of our peoples, uh, the region, and the planet as a whole. During this process, at the same time, has been the educational component, which has not been confined to education and healthcare and medicine alone, but across the board, almost equally between the arts, humanities, and the social sciences on one hand, and the hard sciences and technology uh, on the other. Ponder the following, that there are at least 200,000 Saudi Arabian graduates from American institutions of higher education. And except for a handful of Americans who've graduated from Umm al Qura University in Mecca and the Islamic University in Medina, uh, there are fewer than 20 Americans who've obtained their education here in Saudi Arabia. And what this says has immense implications for both partners. That is to say, there is a gross imbalance or asymmetry between understanding between hundreds of thousands of Saudi Arabians and very limited and sometimes false and unfair and inaccurate understanding by Americans of Saudi Arabians. Uh, this is not healthy for either side. But on the American side, the United States is the beneficiary of the English language, which is the lingua franca for research and development in science and technology, not just in the bilateral relationship, uh, but worldwide. And this is something to which we have both uh, put our shoulders to the wheel and derived 
enormous benefit from. Now, in terms of this cooperation and this strong foundation, which, by the way, was mutually beneficial from the beginning, reciprocally rewarding from the beginning, and it's been ongoing without stop, straight through the Cold War, where both of us were joined at the hip, so to speak, and just ponder that eight-year period of the Iran-Iraq War from 1980 to 1988, when working together, we both have succeeded, with the help of Pakistan and others, in driving the last nail in the coffin of the Soviet Union and in international Marxist Leninist ideologies and communism. And simultaneously, we brought the Iran-Iraq War to an end. Uh, we put the American flag on Kuwait's tankers and safely escorted them into and out of the Gulf. And together, we prevented the Iranian Revolution from expanding to the west side of the Gulf, a challenge then as much as it is a challenge now, although the dynamics and the facets presently have changed significantly, though they're no less urgent, timely, and relevant to both of our respective national security and related threats. And during this time, ponder the following additional fact, that since 1975, there have been more American-trained PhDs in Saudi Arabia's Council of Ministers, its cabinet, than there have been in all PhDs of any kind in the United States cabinet, the Supreme Court, the Senate, and the House of Representatives combined. And right, r racing through that is an element of trust and confidence that is hard to come by, and that has been the envy of virtually other, every other country uh, on the planet. And yet, truth and honesty in speaking and analyzing requires that one acknowledge the following that has been less than healthy. That is to say, on September the 11th, 2001, this was a watershed in the relationship for many Americans. Uh, but many Americans are not aware that March 2003 was a watershed for many Saudi Arabians from the same challenges to their national security and related interest. But on the American side, the unhealthy aspect came in the form of the so-called Patriot Act, which, if read closely, is inescapably focused on Arabs and Muslims. In terms of Americans, from then and to an unhealthy degree to the present, too often seeing Saudi Arabia as a gas station, not a country. Too often seeing Saudi Arabians in the country as an object to be controlled, influenced, coerced, cajoled, manipulated, at whatever cost, as opposed to seeing the kingdom also as an actor, an actor with its own legitimate needs, its own legitimate rights, its own legitimate concerns, its own legitimate aspirations and objectives and goals. And still too many seeing Saudi Arabia as a mountain of money rather than as the heir to an extraordinarily rich culture and civilization that has benefited not just the two respected peoples, uh, but all peoples globally, worldwide. This aspect has been dealt with effectively in some cases, but leaving a lot to be desired in others. For example, no two countries have been and are to this day cooperating more closely and effectively and respectively in counterterrorism than our two countries. As I speak, Saudi Arabians and Americans in Riyadh and elsewhere are side by side exchanging information, analysis, intelligence, and insight related to the national security of both peoples in the broader region and global well-being at the same time. And throughout 
this period in addition to cooperating on these issues, Saudi Arabia has remained wedded to the dollar as the instrument of exchange in its financial transactions with one and all. And this has benefited the United States immensely in the standard of living and the material well-being of both countries beyond what is ordinarily known accepted or understood and respected. As recently as five years ago, actually seven years ago, with the international mortgage housing financial liquidity crisis, it was Saudi Arabia that insisted it would no longer play the role it had played mainly in the past of being with America on the crash landing. But from that point on, it insisted it would be with the United States on the takeoff as well. This is the origin of the G20 with regard to Saudi Arabia's pivotal role in the center and its influence not only on behalf of Saudi Arabians, but those in the Gulf Cooperation Council, the League of Arab States, and the broader organization of the Islamic Conference of 1.6 billion Muslims. In terms of uh, challenges at the present time, they're twofold in the sense of a joint awareness that a healthy people is essential for healthy economies. And healthy economies are essential for healthy social stability. And healthy social stability and economic stability is essential for national security and national stability. And these four are essential for the prospects and potential for prosperity. And so both of us have no daylight between us in that assessment. Each of us is aware also of the health care demands of our respective peoples. And here's where we are similar but different. We're both vast in our territory, but you are, in many ways, a continent more than a country. You have 13 neighbors. The United States is blessed with having two oceans among its neighbors and friendly neighbors such as Canada and Mexico. Would that many countries were that blessed? And yet, where both of us are commanded to provide health care services for all of our people, your approach is different. Yours provides health care services without regard to race, creed, or religion. In the United States, it's legal that, that way, but there's no denying that there's still racial inequalities and economic inequalities that have eluded the best efforts at resolution and solution. Americans can learn much from Saudi Arabians in this regard. And Americans can learn much from Saudi Arabians in additional ways as well, in terms of Saudi Arabia's emphasis on the family, and especially children, and the elderly, and charitable giving, and compassion, and justice. And Americans too often forget the emphasis on justice, even though in the Pledge of Allegiance to America's flag, the phrase of liberty and justice for all is as relevant and timely and urgent now as it has ever been since that phrase was coined. There is the aspect that Americans can also learn from Saudi Arabians in terms of the following, that you, far more so than we, if at all ourselves, are close to the cradle of Western culture as Western culture is known. You are part of the crucible of Western and worldwide civilization as Western and worldwide civilization is known. You are near the intersection of three continents, Africa, Asia, and the Middle East. You are close to the anvil of antiquity. You are nearer than we are to the 
source of sunshine on the classical world. And you are at the epicenter of prayer and pilgrimage, of faith and spiritual devotion for the 1.6 million billion Muslims, nearly a quarter of humanity. All of these things we can learn from you. And fortunately, the atmosphere from this conference and before and everything leading up to it has been more receptive than in quite some time. And the moment for our cooperation is as propitious now as it has ever been. And we can take solace and comfort and our joint awareness of the need for collaborative research on communicable diseases and sharing knowledge and understanding and information on communicable diseases and the entrance and the exit challenges of our respective peoples. Some 70,000 people come into the United States every day from other countries. And here in Saudi Arabia, you have 2.1 million pilgrims that come from all of the Islamic countries uh, throughout the planet. No two other countries have challenges remotely commensurate to these in terms of an objective common interest, a common need, a common concern, a common aspiration and objective. And both of us are aware of the rising demands for health care of a quality and quantitative extent in both of our countries and societies. And we're equally also aware of the rising cost of health care and the need to find innovative, creative ways to keep those costs in check while not compromising the quality of the health care. And we both share a oneness in the humanity and the humaneness and the usness of health care. A person who's trying to have something taken out of them or treated effectively with medicine does not care and rightly does not care where the doctor or the nurse comes from. Human pain and sickness and illness is the same without regard to religion, without regard to ethnicity, without regard to nationality. In this, we are all one as well. On the educational side, you have 110,000 Saudi Arabian citizens in the United States and institutions of higher education at this time, with a high emphasis and value on medicine, nursing, and pharmaceuticals. And the need is to build on the 30-some thousand Americans who are here to bring more Americans into collaborative research and joint authorship, joint lab work, joint technicians, joint creativity and innovation uh, in the realm of medicine and health care. And each of us realizes, not too late, that it is far more economically effective to treat diseases before they begin in terms of preventative medical care rather than managing or administering diseases such as cancer and cardiovascular and diabetes and obesity, which afflict both of our peoples uh, to an embarrassingly horrendous extent. And something else that is new between our two countries in the field of health care and medical cooperation is in the realm of internships. This has been a long time in coming, uh, but I urge, as do others urge the Saudi Arabians amongst us, to urge their American counterparts to try to find ways before these Saudi Arabians return to the kingdom to have had practical, effective, hands-on experience and to bring that back to the kingdom to share with others. And this one-on-one -on -one working together in a collaborative venture is bound to produce results of benefit and reward to not just both of our peoples, but the region 
and the world as a whole. Indeed, Saudi Arabia, being the headquarters of the Gulf Cooperation Council Secretariat, can serve to an even greater degree than it has as the example, the model, uh, for breakthroughs here that can be shared with Kuwait and Bahrain and Qatar and the Emirates and Oman, as well as when peace is restored to Yemen, to the people of Yemen as well. Here we have a situation that needs to be italicized, neonized, and capitalized of bringing this training and education front and center to build on what we have and what we have going for ourselves to keep this chapter in medical diplomacy going forward and to go from strength to strength in our achievements and accomplishments in regional affairs that bear directly on security and stability and war and peace. Both of us are acknowledged leaders Neither has to apologize to anyone for the blessings and the role and the resources and the assets that have been bestowed on both of our peoples and our leaders and governments. And it is heartwarming to be sure to learn in the last few hours that the new Minister of Health, Khaled al Fali, Chief Executive Officer of the world's largest petroleum company, will now bring the administrative gifts and accomplishments and achievements for which Aramco is renowned to the Ministry of Health, uh, which requires a strong administrative hand and strong personalities behind those administrative gifts. Indeed, Saudi Aramco is renowned for tackling large projects which national health care systems are indeed as large national projects, and to completing them on time and within, if not under budget. And these are commanding principles and values and ideals enshrined in the mission and the mandate of Saudi Arabia's Ministry of Health as within every country's Ministry of Health. We are, in short, leaders at the global level and at the regional level, and together each empowers the other to be more effective than were we to be alone. Again, returning to the oneness of our humanity, especially as it is manifested in the field of medicine and, and healthcare services, facilities, buildings, cost, and quality. In short, Despite the obstacles that we continue to confront and not run away from, both of us have a record for which there's no need for an apology. I know of no two countries anywhere in the world that despite our difficulties would not trade places with the two of us within a matter of seconds. It is clear that on both sides, none of us are bereft of blemish. None is devoid of defect or free from flaw. And clearly we are on a sea from which we can see, but we have not yet reached the farther shore. But together we know we can, though not by accident and not by coincidence. Only if enough good people on both sides work together day in and day out in the collaborative way that this conference has underscored and to have more of these conferences and to strengthen and expand the results from each one and to admit our mistakes and not throw money after failed ideas and projects and programs and events and activities own up to the mistakes, learn from our mistakes, share the knowledge and understanding that comes from such learning. All will be the better as a result. And we will reach that further shore to the betterment of both of our peoples and those in this region and the larger world. Thank you.